Hello once again everyone. So, a bit of a stranger video today, but mostly because I discovered that my helmet can uh, fit on Bob, I wanted to go ahead and talk about axe heads. Specifically, if you are looking to get into fighting with pole axes and armor as an extension, which of the kind of three main axe heads that you will see should you go with? Do you have a preference? Should you have a preference? Are there actual differences between these? What do they get you? What do they lose you? Etc. So I just decided I'd slap my helmet on Bob, whack him a couple times for your amusement, and just talk through what I have found in regards to these different heads. Now firstly, it should be noted that uh, there are, of course, other designs you will see. These three are all from Helgi's True History Shop. Um, these are the Helgi heads, and I really do like them. There are also some other companies out there that are making ones like this that are pretty good, but these are what all these are from, and I really do still recommend them above all else. Um, as far as the different shapes of heads, you've got the Vector Corbin in the middle of my left hand. It's kind of the more stereotypical pole axe, or rather pole hammer, as people often incorrectly refer to it as. Then here we have the more uh, English style axe head, or the more stereotypical sort of axe blade. And then finally, in my farthest to my left is going to be a halberd head. Now, halberds, pole axes, kind of a bit of overlap, and people have gone very, very crazy about it, but it should be noted, regardless of whether or not there was any historical classification, we do see that exact head used in Hannesvechten, specifically 101 in Peter Faulkner's um, Vecht book. But either way, let's talk a little bit about what these get you and go from there. We'll go ahead and go sort of, we'll go, we'll go sort of typology that I got exposed to them, as that's the way my brain wants to operate right now. So. Firstly, the kind of stereotypical English style axe head, or you know, you will also see this just kind of all over. It's, it's the default axe head, as it were. What are its main features? Well, firstly, it does actually have a rondel attached to it if you get the one from Helgi's, which is quite nice. So you can bite up close to the extra hand protection, but you've got nice stiff dog. You've got a point here, a point here, of course, your hook. You have your axe blade, you have your maul, and that's really kind of the main features with it. Now, the biggest thing about using an axe blade in place of the maul, as you will see people fight with both ways. Sometimes for one-on-one, -on -one, you'll see people switch around, and the reason you want to do that is because when it comes to fighting in harness, of course, we know that the axe can kill helmets, absolutely. But the other issue with that is, of course, the helmet is still doing its job. And if I'm hitting not well with the axe blade, or not in the correct place, sure, I'm hitting him, but he is not the worst for wear. So there is a certain threshold for what is a good hit versus what is just hard contact with an axe. So to get around this, most people just prefer to use the mall end. But let's talk about that in a little bit more detail. Now, depending upon how you like to cut, if you are a thumbs to tip or thumb to thumb fighter, this mall will be relatively straightforward. It's all about getting that nice dense pressure down there. No matter which strike you're choosing to do, lining yourself up behind it, getting that good hit on there, and just kind of knocking the oil off as it goes so it makes it look like it's getting scratched up. But either way, kind of the main feature of this is going to be just dense scratching surface. Even at close ranges, it's nice and compact, very hard to not kind of get a good shot. I mean, even if I just hit with like the corner, that's still pretty dense, um, which can be quite nice. And it also is relatively small. Um, compared to at least the, the beak that we'll get to later, it's not protruding all that far, which means this end doesn't tend to get hooked, even if you do have it presented forward. It's really this guy that's gonna get hooked more. Now, the big downside of using the axe blade, like I said, is that I really have a sweet spot. It's right in that center of the axe there. If I hit here, it's not gonna be very good. Here, it's not gonna be very good. Of course, any further than that, or more here, it's not gonna do much. It's right there where I can hold it. On the target. Now, the benefit, of course, with this is that you're going to get much more reliable hooking when you're implementing it. You also get the benefit of that nice kind of trident effect wherein you have a fork, essentially, that you can bar things away with more reliably since both ends do scallop forward. This, be, this can be actually very, very, very nice if you manage to hook onto a limb or onto a throat like I showed or things along those lines. The other nice thing about this particular axe head that it'll get you is it does have a very stiff dog. Um, and this is more about like Helgi's heads as opposed to historical. Historically, it wouldn't matter, but this head is pretty stiff and very reliable. So for example, in regards to um, 
in regards to thrusting the target, this will go, you know, this will do just fine against male, but also at WMAW for the nightly D, we were working under the pretense that a good solid thrust like what I just did to the visor, regardless of whether or not your visor was closed or open faced or what have you, but like that, not so great. That, not so great. That one, where it sticks solidly, that would count as though it had gone through. So having something more along these lines can actually be quite nice for that, as we'll see when I get the loose serenade on our camera. But either way, point being, this is a pretty good axe head overall. It's got all the bells and whistles. The only downside with it is that even though this is an axe blade compared to a maul, you really should not chop into people who are not wearing blade with this. It is still basically a splitting axe. It will crack the bone. Um, so what you want to be focusing on is if you're using that axe blade, use it for its, well, really its purpose. I tend to, when I use this, if I've got axe and forward, I'm doing more thumbs to zip because it feels more in line with the blade for me. If I am going to go thumb to thumb, then that's where that maul really comes into its own and does its good work for me. And of course, the dog and the rondel are nice features as well. In the case that I'm up close, of course, that's now keeping me nice and safe as I deliver those thrusts. So, moving on now to our next head. We've got the Beck de Corbin, sometimes also referred to as a Lucerne hammer or other things along those lines. There's a bunch of different names for it. Um, this is more prominently shown in sources like Fiore or uh, Lejeu tends to kind of imply something like this. Uh, we don't get a picture with it, but the idea with this head is that it is much more hammer-like, which on the one hand, regardless of which, there we go, regardless of which grip I do, means that I've got a very good, dense, striking surface, but um, I will say that this um, concave shape, wherein the points are actually slightly more protruded, historically what that does is that puts, you know, like, well, reality what that does is that puts, you know, more force onto those dense points and it crushes in more, but Modernly, with this material, it actually makes it suck a little less, which is quite nice, I find. Um, what's nice about that is that, you know, again, relatively small, not going to get hooked on things, but also harder to hook with. But we'll get back to that again in a second. Now, on the other end, you've got the beak. Got to be honest, the beak is kind of a letdown. I mean, you can get a good solid strike on with it, um, and certainly there are instances where I might choose to. Um, in particular, if I am using those mechanics, like, okay, I'm going to put some hoss into this hip. Let's hit with something that's not going to kill him. Compared to if I do that with the hammer end, that's a lot of force behind that, and it hits a little bit hard. So this beat can kind of be a little bit forgiving. It can also be quite good for in case, you know, they do have mesh shoulders. This, unlike the axe blade, is a little bit easier because it's more of a point to get someone to realize they've been struck without having to break their collarbone. The big letdown with this particular hammer is that the dog is floppy, like really floppy. Like it's it's very hard for it to get purchased and it bends. I'm barely putting any pressure into it right now. Also same with big sets. So you'll most likely see people with these tend to grind them down. They just go ahead and take off this thrusting tip, grind it down to about here where it doesn't flex. And that works out a lot better. I don't know why they have this head for it um, or rather this dog on this head. Maybe it was just a size thing, but I do detest it a bit. So you'll usually see these ground down a little bit. It's not that bad though. Um, but like I said, kind of the downside of using this hammer head is that hooking is now a lot harder. The back you would think would make it easier, and to a certain extent it does, but that back is not terribly long, right? You will see historically longer or shorter backs, of course, but the downside of that is, you know, compared to the, uh, the X head we were just looking at, it's a lot more difficult for me to get a reliable hook, and once I've got it, it's pretty much in there, but can sometimes be to my detriment, and it has basically no forward parry capacity. What I mean by that is that trident effect I was talking about. It's you know, not even the size of my thumb on one side, and it slopes back to me on the other, meaning if I have to catch something up here, it's I have to be pretty on the ball to get that to work. But beyond that, um, no rondel, unfortunately, just lanyards, so no extra protection there, at least with the Helgi version. I haven't seen a version of this that has a rundle attached to it, but you could always, of course, add a piece yourself. But overall, great head, like I said, fantastic. Certainly if you were looking at being more of a close range or you know, strike-oriented player, this can be quite nice, but it loses out in some utility um, when you are worrying more about having to hook or fight more point forward. This is decidedly a bit more point-back oriented, and that can be quite nice, but it can also be a bit of a detriment. 
depending upon how you like to fight. Now, final axe head, my halberds. Now the halberd head, I will say again, same idea. Don't use this against people in lighter gear. I mean, you can spar controls with any of these, of course, but the idea here is that this guy is no lighter or more forgiving than either of those two, even though it is an axe blade. So you really do need to be careful. Um, the major feature of this is it's serious asymmetry. It has pretty much no play on the back. We, it does have a little bit, but in regards to like harness, this is nothing, right? Just for size comparison, actually. The back, which I already said was relatively short compared to this guy, it's, it's, you know, it's noticeable. There is the decided size difference there. And I already talked about how the back is necessarily that great at hooking, right? Getting that around a neck, very difficult. But the benefit you get is you get that big ear shape that is very, very good at hooking. It's just you're stuck on one side. Now that can be to your benefit, of course, because now if I want to deny someone the ability to hook my ax, all I need to really do is get my uh, ear away from them, my blade, and I'm pretty much safe. Because if they do catch this, sure, it can still hook, but it's relatively easy to get clear since it doesn't curve back all that far. The dog is nice and stiff, just like the original head. But yeah, right on target. That's a good stiff thrust, no problems. The main thing you got to look for here is that that head curved slightly back to you. Uh, this is to give it a better cutting surface, but the idea here now is that when you're delivering the strike, you, your sweet spot has moved up a little bit. So with a straight on axe, the sweet spot would be right in the middle. With this guy, it's more like right about here, kind of at the tip of, uh, well, just at the start of that, that slant, which means that if I'm going to deliver a good strike, I need to get it, and that either wasn't necessarily great. There we go, right about there to get a good hit. Um, if I am doing thumb to thumb, that one, again, doesn't necessarily feel as great. Not you can't do it, but I will say, like most axe blades, this does feel a little better thumbs to tip, in my opinion. Um, as well as since the head is so large, it's kind of more beneficial to let it go out front and do its job and things along those lines as you guys deliver your strikes. So, as far as harness fighting with it, it's very, very good in the field, um, as our melees and stuff prove. It's a fantastic axe head, especially for killing armor. But in that regard, you're usually treating it more as a halberd, wherein you are using, you know, that reach, that extension, you got that gravity. And when I use it in its intended form, you know, up here, Meyer S, it's very, very good at what it wants to do. If I am using it in more of a one-on-one -on -one capacity, it still works just fine, but I think you'll find it wanting in comparison to the other two as a first choice. So to kind of go back through one more time, which of these axe heads would I say, you know, I, I like the most for harness fighting, etc. Which one should you look into? It's really whatever strikes your fancy. All of these, of course, are shown. All of these will work. It just depends upon how you like to strike. I will say if you like to play more thumbs to tip, I would go with an axe blade as opposed to a hammer end. If you like to fight a little bit more thumb to thumb or, you know, something along those lines, I would recommend the Beck personally. Not that you can't do thumbs to tip with it, but I find it just feels a little better. Um, or you may want to go with this guy because it has that maul end. Thumb to thumb really doesn't feel all that good with the halberd. If you're looking, if you get stabbed in the hand a lot, you can grab the rondel. It's nice. Or make a rondel. It's not too hard to make one of these. If you know that you're going to be using this in the field as well as one-on-one -on -one combat, then I would gravitate more toward uh, some one of the wider axes as it gives you more versatility in control point forward situations. Alternatively, if you're going to exclusively be a night killer, then this may not be your uh, worst bet. Just it loses out on that utility. You'll have to make up for it with the dog end. Um, as far as you know, you're more of a lightly armored guy, and you are going up against armored guys, so you know it's sort of yeehaw scenario. I do recommend the halberd overall. If you're going to be a number two, a chopper, if you're going to worry about that, then yeah, go for the halberd. It'll serve you best. Either way, though, just a quick little video where I go through you know three axe heads, all from the same maker and just discuss their features. I think they're all wonderful, and I think you'll do just fine with any of them, but figured I'd just go ahead over it. Plus, it gives me an opportunity to whack my helmet as it's on Bob, which is always sort of hilarious. But, otherwise, thank you very, very much for watching. We'll go over some other techniques another time.